um, I did see something online with somebody that I would love to see fight um, Jake Paul. This was, let me see if I can get it up on here. Da, da, da. Let me get up on here. One second. Da, da, da. Give me Twitter. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, work. So there we go. So this guy, I would love to see fight Jake Paul actually going forward. Just for like a, just in terms of a, not in terms of a lesson, but just in terms of a kind of, let's just let's just remind everybody what the levels are. Because I think a Dylan Dennis thing is different because he's young, he's up and coming. He's obviously got a point to prove, right? Um, There'll be a lot more excuses made for that one. But let's go in this one. Where is it? Oh, he posted it. Oh, he's, he's always posting stuff. Scroll down. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? He retweeted somewhere here. Come on, 18 hours ago. It's mad when you're trying to find something on someone's Twitter and they post a million things a day. So, there we go. We have it. So, let's move this around. Uh -huh. There we go. So, if there's one person I would like to go see uh, fight Thingamajiggy, it's this guy. Come on, load, load, load. There we go. So, apparently... Uh, Michael Bisping has been offered the fight against Jake Paul, which is insane, right? Considering that I'm pretty sure, Michael, no. I'm, I'm pretty sure um, he's known for his striking in the UFC and also as a veteran that has seen just about everything in that ring or octagon. So this is probably the fight he shouldn't be taking. If if ever there was a fight that Jake should take, it's probably Dylan Dennis, considering his experience. You know, there's probably he could probably get closer to a Dylan Dennis skill set than he could do to a Michael Bisman, considering the title fights he's been in, the fact that he was a world champion once. This is probably the fight he shouldn't take. But I love it from a spectator's point of view because I think Jake Paul fighting a forty plus year old retired UFC fighting and absolutely washed would be a great way to send a message and remind people that hey, there's levels to this shit. Somebody that's got especially you know he's got one eye riddled with injuries um he could still probably beat this guy up with one hand tied behind his back so for him to do it at a professional level you know on the biggest stage and get a payday especially for like someone michael bisping who some I, I absolutely rate and think is really funny and a great um analyst and commentator on the ufc i would love to see it so this is michael bisping talking about the offer that he received from the jake paul team been like to go and say whatever the fuck I want. So Jake Paul, if you want to fucking go, Logan Paul, if you want to go, then I guess you're going to, uh, you know, put your hands in your pockets and man up because you're talking shit. You're contacting my manager and saying that you want to fight. Well, guess what, buddy? I'm here. I'm going nowhere. Amazing. You want to fight someone? You want to test yourself? Uh, hey, I'm 0 and 0 as a boxer. You're saying you want to know? You're 2 and 0? I'm 0 and 0. I'm Technically, from the technical standpoint, he's infinitely more experienced than you in boxing. Yes, <laughs> yeah, like even if I had one. And I love the fact that he's got a pair of decks at the background because I'm sure I remember Michael Bisping saying that he used to DJ back in the day um, when he used to, you know, uh, do security at, at nightclubs and stuff. Imagine if you were one of the unlucky punters that got chucked out or it got into an altercation with Michael Bisping outside some nightclub somewhere. Like, Jesus Christ. Fight, he'd have 200 percent more or 100 yeah. percent more he, he's way more experienced as a combat sports athlete than i am you should Listen, be the underdog at the end of the day if you want to do this okay stop playing games you want to do it i'll do it i'm here no problem okay uh, i'm almost 42 years old i'm a former world champion wow. and uh i will take you to school my friend. i'll guarantee <laughs> this you won't get out of three rounds. That's an absolute fact. You won't get out of one round, two <laughs> rounds. But we'll say three just Let's to give go. me that little, little insurance blanket. If he gets out of round two, Bisping, that's a moral loss for you and your family. <laughs> well, maybe I'm just going to take my time. Maybe I'm going to do a Floyd May with him and just play with him. No, but seriously, though, if uh, he did reach out to my management and, and asked if I would be interested, if this is a real offer, if this is serious, then uh, let me know and uh, and I'll do it. 100%. If this is a real offer from Logan Paul or Jake Paul or both of you, in like to I love it. I love it, man. Again, I'm contrary to myself because I just said earlier that I think it's been stupid. But I, again, I think if, if there's one, if there's a fight to make, let him fight a retired 
40 plus year old what ex world champion so that we can see exactly what the levels are so we can put this whole thing to bed and just move on because yes the sport of boxing needs to be revitalized yes maybe it's sort of kind of fallen out of the zeitgeist and fallen out of the public consciousness but really is this a right way to sort of bring it back like especially the younger boxers that are coming up trying to fight for world titles and get their name on there on the marquee imagine how they must feel seeing these youtubers essentially leapfrog them and fight at madison square garden all these flipping legendary places that are usually reserved for people that can maybe that's that actually saying that, that that might explain why brendan's such you know is, is such a you know slobs on their knob so much the poor brothers because essentially they're doing the thing that he's doing with comedy right they've sort of like stepped they've kind of you know jumped over a few steps to progress their career they've kind of been able to perform on the bigger stage maybe without any sort of discernible talent um they've kind of used their fame and the attention they have and sort of you know funneled it through in different avenues to sort of bolster their message um maybe that's why he sort of kind of has some sort of affinity with them and they are quintessential california kids and if ever if ever there was a if ever there was a archetype for like the hollywood kid the kid in sort of living in california trying to make it in the same industry they're the archetypes of it right yes they've sort of done it on their own they don't really need the industry i guess that's a great thing they're sort of like self-made in that regard but how they approach things how they go on it's definitely something that you would see brendan doing in the future so that might explain it going forward but still um i'd love to see michael bisping fight jake paul that would be a pleasure again dylan dennis will, would still be a good fight but i still think there'll be a lot of excuses being made if he ends up losing blah, 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 blah. but i think the jake the jake paul and michael bisping again will set a precedent and just let people know that hey there are levels to this stuff and even somebody that's 40 plus year old and has got one eye and suffered loads of loads of injuries can still wash a guy that you think is tough because i think there's a quote out at the moment that's been um attributed to joe rogan where he essentially says the poor brothers are really tough and he rates them and all this sort of shit but yeah you can be as tough as you want but when it comes to facing the top tier talent in the ufc there should be a gap there should be a discernible gap in skill set because if p people even say it about bellator right they say that the roster at bellator is far less it's far weaker than the guys at um ufc if that's the case then come on what, what do ufc people have to really fear when they're facing against the paul brothers maybe there might be something about the occasion getting to them right fighting on that sort of platform with all the media attention especially if you're dylan dennis right you're, you're, you're not really that well known outside of the jiu-jitsu world apart from maybe your association with conor mcgregor so there could be something about hey when you get on the big stage of stage fright but i still think if you're that skilled as those guys are there must be the grooves embedded in your head in terms of how you flow in a fight and how you hit and the combinations and the, the kind of feints, whatever you do, they're so ingrained in you. They come second nature. You might have a couple of minutes where you're sort of, you know, caught under the lights, but then you, you probably shake it out pretty quickly and just go into autopilot and start absolutely smashing guys' faces and you would hope so. Um, but again, waste of time, I think, going forward. I do think that sport boxing should focus on other things, but if it doesn't need to happen, please put it in the realm of somebody like a bit like imagine if these guys fought like a yo romero right guys like what 44 46 recently released by the ufc signed to bellator let him fight those kind of guys you know um that would be a real good way to sort of you know get an idea as to where the levels actually are in this thing that we call fighting but hey what do i know